Are you ready to learn? Because my super experienced guests are ready to share some really valuable information. Make sure and listen all the way to the end to get help and support. So let's start with the best audio experience. How to measure brand awareness, how to create brand awareness, how to create your strong recognition. Today we are going to discuss these very important topics because without that it's hard to go ahead, it's hard to grow your business, it's hard to implement marketing or sales. I'm so excited to discuss this topic with Joe Prata. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me, Anatoly. I'm really excited to be here today to talk about brand measurement. Yeah, big pleasure. I want to learn more about that. I know how it's important. And uh, I often uh, face problems with new brands, you know, because they want to get SEO traffic or use any other channels, but it doesn't work uh, as you have strong brand recognition. And it takes time to create th this brand awareness because today you need to share value first to help others, to support them. Then <laughs> people want to get something back to buy your products. And yeah, then uh, marketing channels can work. Okay, before we start, Josh, tell more about yourself, experience, background, and why you decided to share with us about this very important topic. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, name's Josh Broughton, the CEO of Brand Data. We measure and grow brands. I've been around for about five years as a, as a consultancy, helping uh, medium and large sized businesses that are growing rapidly use brand as one of their key metrics to drive their marketing programs. Prior to that, uh, worked really in the uh, all sorts of different marketing and uh, spaces, uh, mostly in the digital side for about 10 years, uh, worked agency, in-house, uh, worked for B2C, B2B, doing a lot of different uh, types of marketing. Um, uh, and then briefly before that, I worked in the IT space and did some uh, business consulting at, as well. So the, the thing that drove me to brand measurement was that as a performance marketer, one of the biggest things that we always saw was that brand was a, a giant factor. If you're you know, a search marketer, for example, you might look at your uh, traffic and notice that, wow, my branded traffic, it, it converts incredibly well compared to traffic that doesn't, you know, search traffic that doesn't include branded terms or terms that include my, my brand. And so, um, wow, could I, could I somehow, how could I manufacture branded traffic? Could I get more branded traffic? And, and typically um, the answer is, well, it's just brand, you, you know, it is what it is. And same thing in social media, you know, you, you might have a brand where people are always, you know, adoring the brand and sharing the brand and just, you know, really amplifying the brand. Or you might have a brand where people are always complaining about it or talking about it poorly on social media. And so brand is this thing that I think a lot of marketers take as a given as just something that we're dealt with as an input for our marketing. But for those who are really uh, committed to growing, you know, their marketing through all different aspects and levers, Brand is actually one of the the strongest ways that you can improve your marketing efforts. And so, you know, measurement is a core of any good growth plan. And that's where our passion has kind of stemmed from. So we think if you can measure your brand, then you'll be much more successful across all of your marketing efforts. Yeah, agree. I couldn't agree more with that. You know, it's interesting. You know, for example, my son, uh, 12 years old, he doesn't ask me to buy new sneakers. He uh, asks me buy Nike. Uh, my wife <laughs> doesn't ask me to buy a smart watch. They, uh, she asks, buy me Apple Watch. You know? <laughs> and uh, I often see the same issue when some brands have more uh, volume than uh, even keywords. For example, uh, GoPro, I don't know, uh, m m many different brands. Can you tell uh, about importance of creating uh, your uh, strong brand recognition? Because, you know, I see in SEO field when companies, websites pay so much attention to uh, get uh, traffic without uh, strong brand recognition. Uh, they want to get results, but uh, without uh, brand recognition, it's hard. Because people, when they search on Google, they can choose brands, not uh, even if they use common keywords. Any insights? Why it's so important today? Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the most uh, important statistics that we've heard that resonates with us is that if uh, a brand is in your initial consideration set, you're three times more likely to purchase from that brand than just 
hearing about a brand for the first time as you go to make a, a purchase. And so the importance of getting on a consumer's radar early in that journey of theirs to, uh, is, is so it, it's, it's critical because you essentially have a three times better chance of earning that sale from the consumer if you're uh, already a brand that they that they understand and know something about. So that's um, I think it's it's really important to to kind of to to invest in that uh, awareness stage of the, the journey early and then to develop some really strong associations within your category. You mentioned that, you know, your your son wants, uh, you know, Nikes, not shoes <laughs> and and the ability for us as brands to kind of associate with a particular category uh, for our products is really important because, you know, uh, you think about the most famous brands, you know, Band-Aids or uh, Kleenex, uh, people kind of associate or, or even Google, right? People use the, the name of the brand more than they'll use the actual category name itself. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, let's talk about measurement. Can you tell how to measure your brand, how uh, to know the benchmark, for example, if I have some brand recognition, but I want to measure and to compare to my competitors that I have? Yeah, so it's a first important to think about that brand measurement is a really ambiguous term. There's not a, a, a vast consensus, you know. Uh, Google Analytics has driven a, a large consensus about like how websites are measured. And so usually when people talk about website measurement, it, you know, you talk about sessions or conversions or time on site, things like that. But in the brand measurement space, it's a lot more abstract. And so what we at Brand Data have kind of distilled it down to is four main categories. There's brand insights, there's brand tracking, there's brand equity and there's brand lift. And I would say that, uh, you know, each of those has its own function. Uh, and uh, just to briefly kind of go through those brand insights is anything you might need to know about, you know, certain characteristics about your brand personality, your consumer, the price of your product, like all of those different things, one-off things to kind of form components of your brand. Brand tracking is actually kind of more online what you, you mentioned where I want to know my recognition for my brand, familiar consideration uh, or familiarity and consideration for my brand relative to the other brands in my category. So that's brand tracking. Um, there's brand equity where brands attempt to try to draw, uh, connect those brand uh, tracking metrics to internal metrics like revenue, uh, equity or capital, uh, you know, different, different, uh, price per share, those kind of things. So trying to actually tie it to kind of more fiscal outcomes. And then lastly, uh, brand lift, where people are testing out different pieces of creative to see, you know, is this driving recognition with this particular audience, et cetera. So I think as far as most brands are considered, brand tracking is usually that first step where they're trying to draw a baseline for awareness. They're trying to understand how many people are going to use the category. They're trying to understand um, who are the biggest brands in their space and what opportunities for growth uh, exist for them. So when when people think about brand measurement, I think I'd usually kind of push them more towards that brand tracking um, kind of realm. And then from there, uh, help them understand the different aspects of brand tracking that might apply to their brand, depending on the stage that they're in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, love it, love it. Okay, let's talk about creating brand awareness. You know, we, we have many different methods, how you can create brand awareness, uh, content marketing, PR, uh, or just simply having uh, high quality products much better than competitors might have. So yeah, uh, it works well. Uh, can you tell how to choose the right way? For example, okay, I know benchmark, uh, and uh, I need to uh, do more. Uh, to uh, get my com competitors or probably overcome them. So uh, can you tell how to find the right way uh, when we have so many methods, how to create brand awareness? Yeah, I, it's a great question. And I think, you know, it's a, it's a, it's an answer that can be uh, solved through many different methods, but I think, you know, you want to get the most uh, return on investment for your marketing efforts. And so what we typically would advise that our, uh, clients do is first start with figuring out which channels are your consumers the most active in. Are they spending a lot of their time on TV? Are they on TikTok? Are they on Instagram? Are they on Facebook still? Uh, do they do they Google everything? Uh, a lot of highly technical fields 
you know, social media isn't really that big of a deal for them, but they might be spending a lot of times on industry forums or with Google uh, to try and find more, more technical information. So trying to figure out where people are at first, that's the big thing. And then trying to allocate, you know, portions, healthy portions of your media dollars that aren't bound by uh, traditional kind of performance metrics like cost per conversion, return on ad spend, um, uh, max conversion value, things like that. Just unbond yourself from that and actually measure things in uh, things like, you know, what kind of reach am I getting? What kind of frequency am I getting with my audience, especially if it's a small audience? Um, what kind of uh, engagement rates am I getting? What kind of cost per view am I getting? Like, those are the types of things because you're really trying to, you're really trying to reach as many possible people as, uh, as you can within your target market. And, and that really um, needs to be measured differently than your bottom of funnel metrics. Um, one other thing that I would say is, uh, especially when it comes to growing brand awareness, this is where new channels come in, uh, especially well. TikTok's an amazing uh, driver for awareness right now. Podcasts are amazing driver for awareness right now. And there's just a, a lot of different opportunities out there for people as well. Um, TV even, connected TV, there's all sorts of, and programmatic, there's all sorts of really great ways to reach like very even niche audiences with what people used to think was very uh, a very broad play. So all sorts of ways to grow awareness. But uh, in in a summary, it should be measured and and uh, in line with what your consumers are kind of uh, consuming already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. OK, you know, I open your LinkedIn profile and uh, in the section about I can see uh, you can find the insights and create growth strategies that turn brands into market leaders. Let's talk more about that. For example, if uh, I have some big competitors that have strong brand recognition, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm pretty sure about my products, high quality uh, and uh, with my unique selling proposition, what to do, uh, how to uh, create the right strategy. You know, once I spoke with a specialist, uh, uh, in marketing strategy and uh, I ask what the biggest issue she can see and she uh, replied to me uh, when companies have no strategy at all <laughs> they just use generic methods so uh, and uh, according to a few studies uh, uh, probably I don't remember like marketing institute yeah uh, shares the study that uh, uh, only uh, uh, 36% of all companies have a documented content strategy and most of them ignore. Uh, but even these companies that have, uh, it doesn't mean they have uh, personalized uh, some content strategy. They usually uh, copy others. So can you tell how to create this strategy? Uh, and um, uh, it's important to uh, consider not only competition and customers. So uh, any insights about creating uh, the right content strategy? Yeah, I think um, this is a really great question. And I think a content strategy, you know, I think of a content strategy with an advertising strategy and a uh, branding strategy, and they're all different overlapping circles, right? And so ideally, you want to have as much overlap so that, you know, your brand and your advertising and your content are all as much in sync as possible. And I think in that sense, it kind of creates some kind of implied rules for your content strategy if you want it to be aligned with your brand strategy. So from a brand perspective, first of all, if you want to grow your brand to its largest extent possible, um, you need to eventually become the brand leader. And so you need to own that category that you're in. And uh, ultimately, you know, there's uh, something called like the law of the category as far as uh, branding goes. There's, there's usually a one category leader, there's a number two, and then there's everybody else. And that tends to happen over time as, as the category matures. So even if it's really competitive right now, ultimately there's gonna be one leader, one second, and then uh, everybody else. And so if you um, if you wanna grow your brand as, as much as possible, then your content strategy essentially needs to uh, make that assertion that you are the number one brand in your space. You are the number one brand that does what you do um, and you have to fully own all those reasons. And so, uh, it's it actually becomes a lot easier because instead of doing a bunch of research about what people want in the brand itself, you should be doing a lot more research in what people want in the category specifically. And then you should align your brand as much as you can to the category and then have your content flow from that.
that that would be kind of our our recommendation for making sure that you can use content uh, the most effectively to grow your brand as part of a holistic strategy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got it. Okay, let's talk about uh, how to tell companies. For example, if someone uh, pays you for creating a strategy, and you know, I found uh, companies often ignore tips and recommendations from experts. For example, you can create uh, the right strategy, spend time to uh, give what companies need to do, but uh, many of them have no time resources to implement your ideas and uh, according um, I, I found a few um, examples uh, when experts share that only 40 percent of their recommendations are implemented most of them ignore so companies waste money not only to uh, not to implement content strategy they waste money to pay consultants who tell them what they need to do so uh, can you tell your methods how to transfer data that it's important to do uh, to your customers for example if someone uh, wanna create content strategy uh, and when you provide all tips what they need to do but they ignore they have no time resources anything so uh, how to tell uh, about the importance and benefits uh, of your content strategy oh boy yeah i think it's really <laughs> interesting question i think as brand measurement is one of those things that unfortunately or fortunately uh kind of shines a light on some of the the biggest uh, kind of issues and, and opportunities um for for companies and so for example uh if if it comes up that a brand is you know not the favorite brand in a in 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 a category and it's because they have poor customer service let's say as an example uh mm -hmm. then it becomes a very clear recommendation that the company itself should be making a much larger investment in customer service and that's not a that's not just a brand decision that's a structural it's an organizational that's a human human resource and capital investment decision right and a lot of times brands just simply won't do that and ultimately you'll see them get surpassed by another brand who's willing to invest more in their service or something like that we we saw that we were working with a bank one time and and the number one thing about you know about people for banks uh was how many atms are near me because when i need to get cash um you know and what was the online experience like obviously for people with mobile apps and things like that but it was like after mobile apps it was where are the atms and uh we had a bank with you know one ATM in a, an entire metro location and they weren't willing to invest in more ATMs. And so those are things where it's like, you know, you can make recommendations to to a, a, a client or a brand, but if they uh, won't, you know, act on those things, then ultimately, you know, the consumers won't be any less, um, you know, uh, hard on them in the future when, when uh, the brands are measured again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, you remind me a story. Uh, once I, uh, you know, I decided to buy uh, gas, you know, for my car, and uh, my bank denied the operation. Uh, I I had <laughs> empty <laughs> uh, back, you know, but uh, uh, after that I called to my bank. They told me I need to uh, come to the office. I did it. Uh, I wasted like two hours in the office. They told me they can't decide this issue i need to call to some special number they gave me this number um i spent like uh, extra two hours in this call waiting when someone can take this issue and after that they told me it's only uh that was simple reason uh because uh, i didn't use a lot this card so they decided to uh, deny uh, and uh, if i remember correctly i like wasted six hours you know to decide just oh. a simple issue so and, and you told me, yeah and you told me about uh, customer um, service uh, it's not only about this bank uh, uh, i see uh, often when big companies including linkedin uh, microsoft uh, many others have no time to decide customers problems uh because uh probably they have uh, not probably they have million customers million people who can use their services so it's and uh, you need to wait uh, for a long time when your uh, problems will be decided so can you tell what to do if you have a lot of customers 
uh, as my bank uh, has, uh, as Microsoft has, uh, how to decide these problems you, uh, when companies can't invest a lot more uh, to decide these problems. <laughs> sure, sure. Well, I mean, ultimately, I think a lot of those uh, companies' uh, decisions are driven just essentially by uh, the amount of resources coming in and coming out, right? If you have uh, a really big customer, a really big client, or a, a customer with a lot of money, you're probably going to get a, a larger level of service that that will end up, you know, making making you know uh, things. Uh, overall okay. Uh, from there, you know, people like you and me, where we have to stand in line and and, and, and wait for, for the queue to, to open up. Um, I think that's where technology um, also a, uh, a really just honest, uh, I guess, investigation of how important those things are to your customer. I think, you know, if you're, if, if, uh, if we have issues all the time, uh, then yes, it would be it would be important to invest in a really good services operation um, for things like an individual's money or their privacy or security. I would think you'd want to invest in a good level of service for that as well, just because you know it's um, you know you don't want to you things like your health and your money are are uh, are more important to a lot of people than just you know let's say a, a cup of coffee that they would get at a Starbucks, and so you have to treat that with a little bit level uh, more. Uh, level of higher service, I would think. So um, I guess mm -hmm. the, the the answer is it depends on the company that you're dealing with. But I, ideally, you should probably want to do best on your customer if you want to grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, I got it. Okay, let's talk about uh, uniting PR and marketing. Uh, I see you have experience in marketing. Uh, and uh, can you tell how to provide both because PR is not uh, about uh, selling products. PR uh, uh, creates a reputation. PR can help to uh, to talk about your brand. So any insights how to unite both strategies? Yeah, I think uh, ultimately the goal of uh, marketing and PR both is to achieve that uh, that uh, that positive brand or that uh, that brand growth that uh, would result in in successful uh, PR or marketing. So, you know, for PR, oftentimes there's certain messages that a company or a brand will want to own and repeat in the marketplace, so that consumers uh, will associate those messages with that company. And that's that's the whole goal of branding. And I think. In a lot of cases, the same should be true with marketing too. It's not just about you know making a bunch of ads and throwing them out there, but trying to repeat some of the most important messages, trying to uh, reinforce certain ideas and beliefs at certain times of the customer journey. Like those are those are important objectives of marketing that that need to be there as well. So I think, um, uh, and then also you know just from a you know a tactical perspective, you know if somebody searches for brand measurement or if somebody searches for brand lift. Uh, they have a really good chance of finding some content that brand data has published. And that goes a long way to uh, increase our kind of uh, our, our, our recognition within our particular category as people are learning about the importance of brand measurement, brand lift, and, and how to make that happen. And so I think tactically too, your marketing can help drive brand recognition through kind of claiming out different types of keywords in your you know strategy or hashtags within your social media strategy or uh things like that so i think uh both pr and marketing can work together to repeat and reinforce the types of messages that you want your brand to be synonymous with to grow and own your category mm -hmm. uh, i open uh your uh, company profile on linkedin brand data by the way i like this <laughs> no name because you can unite the words brand and data okay uh i'm interested about this quote growth comes from inside can you explain what does it mean uh and how uh you know um yeah any insights about this quote <laughs> Yeah, I think a lot of the times people talk about like, you know, data driven growth or, you know, uh, product led growth or marketing led growth or customer service led growth. And ultimately, uh, we believe that growth comes from insights. And, and it's not the fact that you have a product or marketing or advertising, etc. But it's that moment where you recognize that there's a need for the customer that you can meet and then you act on that. And all of a sudden, they love your product more or there was a gap that you know you had that was causing somebody to choose a, a customer over or a, a competitor over you and then you filled in that gap and added two more features uh and now they like you even better 
Like those are those are just insights that if you if you knew them, you probably would uh, I guess have a lot more intention in your marketing strategy. Whereas a lot of people, I think, because they don't do a lot of research or a lot of voice of customer kind of uh, insight work, they end up just throwing a lot of things against the wall or or targeting things with their own best perception of what they think people want. And it doesn't necessarily work as well as what they would hope. So we definitely think that, you know, all those those mentalities like product led growth and, and, and customer experience led growth, like those are great mentalities. But even beyond that, like it's the insights that drive our ability to better serve our customers and grow our brands as a result. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you tell how to find these insights? Because, you know, uh, I see companies uh, use data, they uh, collect data, and um, it depends on methods of collecting this data. Sometimes we can use tools, we can uh, ask our customers. But um, another way uh, is to use your intuition. For example, uh, I found that some influencers don't use a lot of data, but they play with their intuition experience. And can you tell how to find the balance between intuition and data? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, frankly, if you're an influencer and you're making millions off of, uh, you know, TikTok endorsements, then probably lean on your intuition and not talk to, you know, data driven folks like like myself. But um, but if, you, if it's less than that, then I would say that, uh, you know, um, it's, it's always a trade off, right? Like you can't afford to spend all of your marketing budget on research, but uh, a lot of companies, they allocate 10% uh, or, or maybe even more on making sure that what they're doing, you know, when they're spending money on media dollars or developing content, that it's actually um, hitting that mark with, with consumers. And so I would say uh, uh, the more, you know, about your customer, the, uh, and the better your your kind of a momentum is, the the less you probably have to rely on research. The earlier you are on in a journey, the more ambiguous your uh, your data in your current like systems are, and like the less certain your your next steps are as a as a brand and as a marketing strategy. Then it's probably time to at least do some sort of baseline insights work. You know, maybe you want to lead a focus group with your customers. Maybe you want to send an internal email survey. Maybe you want to run a brand tracking study within your industry to figure out kind of, you know, what brands are out there, who people care about, what what's important to the category. Do people even want to use your category? That sort of thing. So I think if you can answer a lot of those questions and you're probably in a good spot, you don't need to like rely too much. Um, but, uh, you know, I always should have some modest level of kind of insights budget to make sure that you're learning about the the, the customer um every mm -hmm. day yeah nice nice uh once i read a story about jeff bezos and uh the research team uh brought to him uh data about a new product uh, and they told him we need more time to analyze to collect more data and he replied to them no Guys, nobody knows what actually works. It's enough. We can test it. We can analyze it. We can uh, provide experiments and something like this. Uh, and that was about uh, creating the product Alexa <laughs> today. Uh, mm -hmm. It's very popular. Um, uh, can you tell about, uh, and once I had a conversation with one data specialist and uh, she told me, uh, you don't need to get uh, more data, like over data than you need. Can you tell how do I know mm. that it's enough for me and it's better to test or uh, keep collecting this data? <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean, I think I think oftentimes, um, uh, like I said, like growth comes from insight, right? So I think doing enough research to get some insights, uh, those insights drive hypotheses for experiments. And so I think if you have a lot of different hypotheses for what you want to experiment with, then great, keep running tests. You don't need a lot of data to validate whether a test is good or not. As long as you have a valid test and you want to test something out, you should you know, be able to, to, to do that um, and, and uh, just run a bunch of tests. But if you're you know, if you don't have a hypothesis, then you should likely, uh, you know, benefit from doing uh, some insights work or some brand uh, research work to kind of fuel those ideas for for better 
and more robust experimentation programs. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about mistakes. You know, uh, for example, I usually uh, make, you know, I make a lot of mistakes. Uh, I keep doing them. I made a lot of mistakes in my life. And uh, but once I read uh, a quote from Elon Musk and he told, if you don't make mistakes, you are not innovative enough. So uh, I think, you know, when you create strategy for your customers, uh, sometimes we can test, uh, fail and find uh, how to change and adapt to these challenges. Can you tell or list mistakes, common mistakes that companies still do? by uh, measuring brand awareness and uh, how to save time and resources to find a much better way. Sure. Yeah. I think because um, it, we see this a lot in our space, especially because brand measuring is a very uh, fractured or fragmented space. And so there's not like one perfect way to, to do it. So a lot of people, when they're asked at their organizations to, hey, how's our brand doing? Or is our brand growing? They start to look for a lot of ad hoc or piecemeal solutions. And so um, we've seen uh, some popular uh, ideas include looking at your social media mentions, you know, what percentage of them are positive, negative, et cetera. Um, we don't necessarily think social media uh, mentions is a, is a good reflection of that overall brand uh, that uh, it can, it can help you understand an, uh, a, an aspect of it, but it's not a good proxy for the overall brand as a whole. Same thing with things like, you know, traffic, uh, branded search traffic, right? A lot of people will look in their Google search tools and they'll understand how many people searched for, you know, their company or brand name. And if that went up compared to last month, they'll assume that their brand's growing. Uh, if it went down, they'll assume that their brand is on the decline. Uh, there is a lot of uh, correlation for a lot of brands, but overall, again, it's a good proxy and there's a lot of things that can throw that off. Um, so, so, Ultimately, we find that the you know the best way to kind of get started with measuring brands is more in a brand tracking methodology where you'll identify a set of metrics or questions that you want to kind of understand about your brand. You'll find an appropriate audience to uh, to field those questions or answer those uh, questions as part of a study or so, and then you'll uh, essentially develop metrics from people who go through that study. Uh, and and figure out kind of what they thought. And there's all sorts of different ways to do that too. You can do that in real time. You can do it monthly. You can do it daily. You can do it annually, quarterly. Uh, you can you can do control and expose tests. There's lots of different flavors to that. But a, a you know a good vanilla way to get started would be to do a brand tracker or targeted at your um, ideal customer profile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice, nice. Okay, uh, I have the question about, you know, once I spoke with a webmaster, one webmaster, and he told me uh, he lost uh, 400,000 traffic a month because Google dropped his uh, search results, but mm. he didn't lose any sales. So he, he had a huge traffic that didn't sell at all. Can you tell about creating a buying persona? Because, you know, uh, when you create PR strategy or uh, strategy to create brand awareness, it doesn't mean you can touch your customers. Uh, you can uh, get traffic, you can get engagement, but uh, who knows uh, this traffic will sell in the future or help uh, to your brand. Any insights about uniting strategy with a buying persona? Yeah, I think um, our, uh, our, our work that we do typically helps to shine a, a good light on uh, personas and, and the development of them. I think a lot of times people think about personas as uh, demographics, right? Are they men or women or, or are they old or young or, or something like that? Um, but mo most of the times the most popular or the most successful personas or, or segments are based on kind of behaviors or, or beliefs. And so when we take our uh, consumers through studies, we'll ask them questions uh, about their attitudes, about the brand, uh, about the category. Why did they use the category? What did they use the category for? Um, what does it do for them? Uh, what, what, uh, you know, how much money do they spend on it uh, in a given time period? Uh, what brands do they like? And those types of questions help to create much more 
meaningful segments and, and clusters in terms of uh, ideal, you know, creating those personas, because then, you know, if there's somebody who really wants the best, right, and they want to make sure that, you know, they're seen wearing the best or using the best, then, you know, you might want to, you know, make sure that your brand, you know, caters towards, you know, aspects of that. So there's ways, uh, there's, there's ways uh, to kind of bake luxury or, or prestige into the, the product or brand. Um, whereas maybe there's some other aspects that are more functional. And, and so you have to serve that as well with your product or your service. And so those are the types of things that, you know, if you can um, invest in understanding more about that uh, from your consumers, either, you know, through first party data on your website or, you know, do a market study and ask, you know, your target customer, you know, kind of landscape to segment themselves into different behaviors that uh, that you can then turn into audiences or, or different types of targeting uh, tactics uh, from your marketing perspective. Like those are those are ways to kind of tie research into into action when it comes to being better uh, at uh, thinking about personas and, and how to how to market directly towards them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice, nice. Okay, Josh, I have the question about your experience. Um, you know, I have uh, students in my network uh, who are looking for ways to uh, learn something new, uh, to become an expert in one uh, good day, you know. So uh, let's imagine you started from scratch without any experience, knowledge, skills. What would you do today to learn more about uh, brand measurement? Well, I would go to branddata.com because we have a brand measurement guide and uh, all sorts of uh, brand metrics glossaries, things like that. Um, but I think, you know, more broadly, I think there's uh, there's just a real um, benefit to investing in the different types of technologies and major uh, tool sets that are being developed out there today. So there's a lot of Web 3.0, AI, machine learning, a lot of different things there. Uh, one of the one of the uh, survey tools that we use the most, Polefish, they just announced a new AI powered survey building tool, which we thought was kind of interesting, or maybe maybe it wouldn't be as uh, you know maybe like those chatbots that that don't uh, provide a ton of value. But so far as we've been poking around with it, it is a pretty interesting way. Uh, it's surprising to us how how effective that tool is for building out a, a, a pretty robust study for people based on just a few questions in, in uh, or just a little bit of input. So I think AI is gonna be a powerful driver in all different fields of study. Uh, and then within our space, within brand measurement, there's uh, always new tools on the marketplace um, that, are, that are helping uh, marketers get more value for their money when it comes to brand measurement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Josh, I have the final question. You mentioned about AI. Uh, you shared a lot of valuable insights. I'm going to use them because I love it. I love to experiment. But I have the question about the future. In many things are coming. Uh, metaverse, augmented reality, I don't know. You know, we will see. Uh, so can you tell what to do today to adapt to the future uh, new technologies? Uh, and uh, can you predict this future? What uh, will work in the future? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, I think I, I think just think for brands, like the, the best thing you can do is just invest in your brand because, you know, whatever channels or technologies uh, become more popular in the future, if you do a good job of serving your, your consumer where they, uh, where they tend to be, and you are uh, kind of synonymous with the, the the most important benefits in your category, and you really um, you know own those, and and your customer believes that. Then I don't really I think all of the other stuff kind of falls into place. Like you can you can build a TikTok strategy you know, eventually uh, and infuse it with that brand. You can you know stop using Facebook if you have to eventually uh, because you know one day nobody's going to use Facebook. I don't know when that day is going to be. It's not now, but. Uh, you know, you know what I mean? Like, so if you end up investing in that brand now, then I think you can kind of safeguard yourself uh, for the future, whatever it might hold. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. Awesome, awesome. I love all your insights. Uh, Josh, tell the best way how to learn more about you, how to follow you, how to reach out to you. 
Yeah, absolutely. I'm uh, JL Broughton on LinkedIn and Twitter. And then you can follow us on branddata.com for everything brand measurement related. So thanks, Anatoly, for having us. We appreciate it so much. Oh, for me, it's a big pleasure to learn from experts like you guys. You need to follow Josh on social media. You need to open his website. You can find in the description below. Thanks again for listening and watching us. Josh, a big pleasure. I love all your insights. Yeah, it's so valuable. I'm going to share this episode with all my audience and uh, I'm pretty sure it will help a lot. Okay, guys, love you. See you.